hello students let us discuss today the topic verbs please open page number 231 take pencil in your hands according to the definition verbs are words that tell us about an action occurrence or state they form the main word part of the predicate of a sentence so in a sentence you get a part of subject other part will be known as predicate and predicate always contain contains this word verb so two main classes of verbs are lexical verbs here in the diagram you can see there are two main classes of verbs one is lexical verbs verbs that describe an action and form the main part of a verb phrase are known as lexical auxiliary or helping verbs any forms of be do have and model that are used before the main verbs and to form negative and interrogative sentences then these are known as auxiliary so let me explain the whole chart now action verbs are here linking verbs are there under lexical verbs so action verbs further is divided into two that is transitive verb intransitive verb and this side these auxiliary verbs are divided into modal auxiliary verbs non modal auxiliary verbs auxiliary verbs so and so so here verb has got one more arrow that will show you that will explain you subject verb agreement it's uh, not an easy task because once you come to know how to identify a subject after that to recognize whether the subject is singular or plural according to those controlled part of subject you will be using the verbs to so that we have to learn forms of verbs finite verbs non finite verbs regular or weak verbs irregular verbs phrasal verbs and prepositional verbs so these many things we are going to learn in this video i will go step by step maybe today i will take the topic of lexical and auxiliary only so that it doesn't become too much for you so what are verbs according to the definition as we have already cleared verbs are the uh, words that describe the action or state or the occurrence so let us have a um, quick look how do we uh, get verbs like sometimes in one single word in the form of one single word sometimes in the form of two sing, uh, two words and sometimes we get three words also so all these three examples will tell you what action does the verb do, uh, do. right whether it is acting as a main verb whether it is acting as a helping verb and so and so those details we will learn let us talk about lexical verbs and auxiliary verbs verbs can be put broadly into two categories lexical and auxiliary now lexical verbs are the main verbs of a sentence that carry meaning each lexical verb has a meaning of its own that is different from the other lexical verbs a lexical verb can express an action or a state of being for example sheetal writes nice poetry so after sheetal you are getting a word writes here so this is an action therefore this will come under the category of lexical rohit enjoys so here this is a state of being here no action is been done but here the action is done but what happens is 
Rohit enjoys. We are not saying that Rohit is doing anything, but it is stating one's being how Rohit feels. So the lexical verbs that express any action, physical or mental, are identified as action verbs. They are also called dynamic verbs. So this is the new term which you uh, will have to learn. He runs. Now the action done by the subject he. So physical activity is there. Therefore, it will be known as dynamic verb. The fox jumped. Again, something has been done by the fox. Yes, so he jumped. So body involvement is there. Next, the lexical verbs that describe a fact, a situation or state of being rather than an action are identified as linking verbs. They are also known as static verbs. You know, these are static verbs. Static verbs. They connect the subject of a sentence with the information. For example, the teacher got angry. In this case, got is a linking verb because it connects the subject teacher to the adjective angry that describes the emotion of the teacher. Other examples of linking verbs include prefer, remain, become, appear, look, feel, etc. See, so here body involvement, involvement was there. Therefore, it was a dynamic verbs. But what is happening this side? The teacher got angry. Now, her emotion is described with this word got. So, he, this will be known as linking verb or static verbs. Okay, she is beautiful. So, here the third person singular form of be links she like subject with beautiful complement. These are uh, the details of identifying the verb how it works and all that you will have to see how lexical and auxiliary verb they are uh, distributed and uh, they give different meaning to the verbs now let us talk about auxiliary verbs they are helping verbs and support the main verb for example Harriet is singing a song see this Harriet, is is also a verb, singing is also a verb, a song. So these two are verbs, but if you suppose miss this word, you will get Harry singing a song. Means with the main verb, if you by mistake or forget to put is, that is helping verb, then your statement will be understood at least. Yes, grammatically wrong, but it will be understood. But if you are not writing main verb and you are only taking the help of helping verb, then how will your statement be? You will not understand what actually the person is trying to say. It will be like, Harry is a song. So now you have made Harry a song. So this is not uh, going to help like that or it's not going to work. Therefore, what we have to do is we have to take care of both the verbs when we frame the sentence. So after that, we are getting model verbs. You already know like can, could, will, shall, should. These are all known as model verbs. So in this uh, page we have learned what are verbs. Lexical and auxiliary verbs. Linking verb here. Some a few new definitions we have got. Now let us see here verb and verb types. So it has got main three non-model auxiliaries. So these is very important students. You can write here important. Like in to be and its form is, mr was, these are the be forms. 
this is to have and its form has got has have had do has got does do did and both modal and non modal auxiliary verbs can combine to make question forms and negative forms as well so these non modal auxiliaries which we have already discussed here they will be helping you in framing the questions also your question never only begins Uh, with the wh not only uh, begins with the wh family but it also begins can also begin with auxiliary verbs right you can start your question with is am are like this so th this is how these are very important so let us see here what is written in this box did you know verbs like be have and do can be both lexical and auxiliary how can this be lexical is a main verb and auxiliary is a helping verb now this statement says these be forms and have and do these can be used as a main verb also and lexical and the auxiliary verb both we can use let us see the example the train is late see this is the verb here and the train is not doing any action but what is the uh, role of is here it is done as lexical verb here the main verb of this sentence is is you cannot say the train late so what are you saying the train is late the train is running late now the running word is a main verb right running word is a main verb and is is here a helping verb so in the next also let us see here the boys had sand sandwiches for breakfast so boys had sandwiches for breakfast the boys had bought now here this is acting as a main verb because no other verb is there so had is here in this sentence is known as helping verb but here uh, bought will be main verb i did homework here did will be main verb but here did is helping verb so this is how you will have to solve so for one more page let me discuss verb and verb types so these students uh, dear students these are very important topics that you need to know about verbs we have understood what verbs are these are actions and we have also come to know two categories one is lexical and other one is auxiliary so now we will also uh, go to the depth of the verb here it is a transitive and intransitive to understand this concept transitive and intransitive you should know what a subject is what a verb is and what an object is because when we will be identifying transitive and intransitive we should know all these terms now let us see action verbs can be either transitive or intransitive transitive has got always an object in it after the verb but in transitive it does not require any other noun to complete its sense so uh, let us uh, listen to the example here a verb is said to be used as a transitive when it transfers its action to an object such verbs can be used as passive voice as well so if you are familiar with active passive then you will know that we can make a passive voice of that sentence so like i write a letter so what do we do in passive voice a letter will start the sentence a letter is written by me so this is how it shows that this sentence is a transitive sentence it has always got either the direct object or the indirect object so when you study this you will know uh, gave what a shirt 
so when you answer what in the sentence then this is a direct object to whom when you say kisko then that is a uh, that is an indirect object so like this you will not understand unless you come across any uh, example so right now kindly try to focus on this page like here she sings this is a complete sense but after sings there is nothing written she sings ve gaati hai she sings beautifully bahut acha gaati hai this sentences are complete in its sense it but it does not have an object object kaise pata chalega ki object is not there because there is no noun she sings dono mein hi aapas mein baat khatam hogi aur iska asar the it does not require any object to be uh, to complete its or clear its sense so this sentence in itself is a complete sense so this is known as intransitive verb right you cannot make passive of it because passive always requires an object it does not have an object now verbs and inflections verbs can also be classified based on their shape or inflection like how their forms or ending changes like if you see infinitive to cook base form is cook simple present cook cooks and this box you need to learn past participle will be cooked here and present participle will be cooking here and after that you are getting regular and irregular verbs now let us have a look regular verbs take ed to form their past and past participle forms such as touch touched cook cooked ask asked asked so like this uh, ed forms like uh, such verbs are also known as weak verbs these are known as weak verbs when you are only simply trying to put ed in the la, uh, uh, at the back of the word at the end of the word irregular verbs are verbs that have different or exactly the same past and uh, past participle forms as their present forms now this may confuse you but if you little pay attention it will be very clear to you they say Uh, exactly the same past and past participle form as their present forms like see saw seen began begin began begun cut 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 so these verbs are known as strong verbs so uh, these are of course strong see these they are all having the different powers so these are strong they are having the same power see this is also touched ed 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 same power so these are weak verbs right now finite and non finite lexical verbs may be finite or sometimes it may be non finite also let us see finite verbs are the verbs that are used according to the number and person of their subject for example i sing but he sings it is not i sings or he sing i sing he sing no so these are controlled by the subjects i will always take sing but he will always take sings they sing in all the above sentences the verb sing changes its form and it is limited by the number and per person of the subject so like this it goes so these are known as finite and non finite verbs and non finite here you are having the definition non finite verbs are verbs that are not affected these are affected because i will take without s they will take without s you will take without s but he she it or any singular noun it will take s with it so let us see non finite what do they say he likes they will Uh, where the uh, verb is same he likes this is controlled they will but see here these are also verbs so here also see if it is he 
to sing if they then also to sing i then also to sing uh, to sing so they are not changing according to or uh, the subject or they are not controlled by the subject so these are known as non finite words okay so this was from both the pages i have already tried to explain you so i hope students i am clear with this lesson and the explanation of the chapter i wind up and you will be doing the exercises with me and if you are having any doubt you are going to a market and later on discuss it with me any time without any hesitation unless and until you ask i will not come to know what you have not understood but take pain and uh, improve yourself students take full advantage of teaching yourself learning yourself because this is how you can help yourself and yes most importantly stay, stay safe stay healthy take care bye bye